Interacting with Home Assistant on your phone is cool, but did you know you can control your smart home from your smartwatch, in your car, or even from within virtual reality? In this video, we'll be taking a look at six different flavors of the Home Assistant companion app, how some can be used as sensors within Home Assistant, and even set up actionable notifications with some of them. Let's first take a look at one way to access Home Assistant, which is technically not a companion app, but still important and used by many, and that is with a web browser. To get to Home Assistant, you can navigate to homeassistant.local colon 8123, or by using the IP address if you know it. Once you have the page loaded, you can log in and then manage all aspects of your Home Assistant. Now because this is just a web browser, there are no available sensors that can be used to run automations. I do think it would be pretty cool to see a Windows app in the future that would open up that capability. The first two companion app flavors we are going to look at are very similar, and they are Android and iOS. While these two flavors are very similar, they do not share full feature parity. This means that some integrations and sensors that work on Android will not be available for iOS and vice versa. For example, Android has support for device controls and widgets, which iOS does not. But iOS has support for actions and Siri shortcuts, which do not work on Android. I'll have a link in the description below that show the differences between the two companion apps. Also take note that there are two different Android versions, full and minimal. Like the name sounds, Minimal is going to have a scaled back feature set compared to Full. With the biggest difference being that Minimal for Android does not support location updates, notifications, and some sensors. Both the Android and iOS companion apps allow for controlling your Home Assistant deployment as if you were managing it from a web browser. This means you can manage users, onboard new devices, make sure your backups are running, and even update Home Assistant right from your mobile device. The bigger benefit of using either the Android or iOS companion app is the ability to use sensors from that device within Home Assistant. Doing so unlocks even more home automation capabilities. A popular use case for sensors is to utilize location to help drive home and away automations. But there are plenty of other sensors that can be used as well. For example, you can have your phone activating or deactivating Android Auto be used as part of a trigger to run home automations. Another great feature of both the iOS and Android companion apps is the ability to have notifications. With notifications, you can have important information pushed right to your mobile device based on automations. This could be helpful if you want to be notified if certain doors or windows are left open for too long, if you want to be notified when someone comes home or leaves based on their location sensor, or if a leak sensor has detected water. Notifications are helpful, but Home Assistant allows you to take your notifications to the next level with actionable notifications. With actionable notifications, you are able to actually have multiple options displayed right within the notification. They'll have different outcomes based on how you program the notification automation. There are some differences between Android and iOS, so make sure to take a look at the documentation for actionable notifications. Here are a few example use cases for actionable notifications that I think are pretty neat. One example could be for when a leak detector senses water. Instead of just automatically having your water shut off with a smart water valve, you could be given the option to either ignore the alert and allow the water to stay on, or to go ahead and actually have the water shut off. Another example is to be presented with an option to turn off your HVAC system if any doors or windows are left open for too long while your heat or AC is running. I would love to know of any other examples you might have for uses with actionable notifications, so let me know in the comments below. The next two flavors of the companion app are somewhat similar to each other the Apple Watch and the Android smartwatch, which is also known as Wear OS. Take note that Apple Watch integration does require watchOS 5 or later to work. The Wear OS companion app features favorites, which are entities that you select that appear at the top of your list. These entities will be presented before the rest of the entities are loaded, so they can be executed immediately upon launching the app. For any entities shown on the watch, you can long press it to have the more detail screen shown. This screen contains more information on the state and when the entity was last updated. The Wear OS companion app also supports two different tiles, the shortcuts tile and the template tile. The shortcuts tile shows up to seven shortcuts, which can be chosen from the settings section in the Wear OS app. This tile can be updated right from within the companion app on your smartwatch. The template tile needs to be created from the Android companion app, and keep in mind that it is not possible to scroll in the tile, so the template should fit on your watch screen. With Wear OS, you're also able to set complications for Home Assistant entities. The complication will display the current state of the selected entity. Depending on the watch face, the complication may also show the entity name and icon. The Wear OS companion app supports relaying notifications from any app on the connected device by default, which means that the notification needs to be sent to the connected device first before it reaches the wearable. And the Wear OS app allows for notifications to be sent directly to the watch bypassing the connected device. 
Just keep in mind that not all notification features supported by the connected device are supported by Wear OS. Wear OS also supports notification commands, which are used to actually send a message that acts as a trigger for the smartwatch. At the time of recording, Wear OS only supports two commands. And lastly, Wear OS supports a large range of different sensors that can be used as part of Home Assistant automations. For the Apple smartwatch, you can have a variety of faces and complications. With complications on the Apple smartwatch, there are four main types of information you can use. Text, ring, gauge, and image. The Apple Watch companion app also supports using actions that have been set up already on a paired iPhone, which can be accessed from the Home Assistant watch app or by tapping a complication. One thing that is lacking with the Apple Watch companion app is sensors. The Android Auto companion app is a bit on the bare bones side of things. The Android Auto experience allows you to interact with different Home Assistant entities right from your car's infotainment screen. It also allows for you to set up navigation to any zone, person, sensor, or device tracker that has location enabled, which is pretty neat. The Android Auto flavor also does not feature sensors, but it does now support notifications under the beta version for it. For these notifications to work, however, they have to be able to show up on your phone. For the best experience, it is recommended to use a specific channel for notifications that should be visible in Android Auto. While there are no sensors for Android Auto in particular, you can enable a sensor on your phone that will tell Home Assistant when you have Android Auto enabled, which then can be used for automations. One feature I hope gets added in the future is something available within the SmartThings Android Auto experience. With it, when you leave the area you have set for your home, a notification will pop up asking if you want to run a predefined automation. Likewise, when you enter the location area for your home, a different predefined automation can be run. I like this because I don't always want certain automations to run when I leave or come home, and with having the automation run through a notification option, I stay in control of if the automation actually runs or not. The sixth and final Home Assistant companion app we will be looking at is for the Quest VR headset. That's right, you can actually control your smart home right from within virtual reality. Nice. This works on both the Quest and Quest 2 headsets, but does require SideQuest to be set up on the headset to load the companion app. The Quest companion app is actually the minimal flavor of the Android app. So not all features of the full Android app are going to work with this. For example, there are no services, no widgets, no shortcuts, and no standard notifications possible. With that said, you are able to fully manage and control your Home Assistant, just like if you're using a browser. And there are several sensors available that can be enabled to drive different automations. I'm not sure how useful being able to control your smart home from a VR headset is, but with some of the sensors, such as if it's being used or not, and battery charge level, I can think of a few different automations that would be helpful to have being driven by them. I'd love to know what other flavors of the companion app you think there should be, so let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, as it signals to YouTube that they should share it with others. I recommend checking out this video right here. In it, I go over how you can use your smart home to help make life easier, save time, and maybe even save a little money with the help of home automation. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release other smart home related videos just like this one. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy automating.